Welcome everyone. I'm Jonna and I'm going to be the moderator today for Dr. Stevenson. Um, we want to thank you for coming today and we're very excited to share the information um, about diabetic eye care. Uh, to just do a little bit of housekeeping before we launch uh, in today. There is a question box um, in the GoToWebinar panel. Throughout this discussion, if there's any questions or comments uh, throughout, you can chat them. And at the end, I will read them to Dr. Stevenson and he will answer them. Um, yeah. If there's anything that we don't get to today, uh, please feel free to still go ahead and chat it. And then one of our team members will follow up with you afterwards as well. So again, thank you for attending today. And I'd like to introduce Dr. Edward Stevenson. Hello. Welcome. So just Hopefully let me know when you, you want to. can hear me. Yes, we can hear can you. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, good. Um, we'll go to the next slide here. Where is our, well, thank you all for joining us for this. Hopefully this is something very useful for you and we can answer some of your questions. We're working on pulling up this slide here so I know what you guys are seeing. Okay, so you guys should be able to see my screen. Um, do you see it through the go-to? Webinar? Yes. So, so am I just going to have to, you're going to have to. You're just going to tell me. Follow along because I'm not going to be able to actually see what you guys are directly seeing. Is that how this you, works here? You should be able to see. Okay. Um, click, click on the bottom. We're on the first, we're on the first slide. Yes. Oh, there we are. There we are. Okay. Um, all right, so November, uh, getting near the end of this 2021, Diabetic Awareness Month. Diabetes, as uh, I'm sure most of you are aware, is a pretty common disease, and most of you are aware of it, um, affecting basically one in 10 Americans. It's a growing number, um, and almost a third of everybody is at least suspect for diabetes. So pretty large uh, portion of the population, a growing number, and of course, is, that's growing, and uh, people are generally getting a little bit sicker and older and everything. Uh, as a population, we're seeing more complications from diabetes as well. So, uh, so the common stuff that uh, can happen with diabetes, common things, cardiovascular disease, increased risks of heart attack, stroke, um, just poor blood circulation, Nerve damage uh, can cause a lot of problems. Most people complain about burning, tingling uh, in their feet. Uh, it can be a very obnoxious complication. Uh, but you can also get GI issues and other issues that come from nerve damage. Uh, kidney uh, issues, kidneys and eye problems are very similar in nature because they both have a lot of very small blood vessels. And so we tend to see kidney and eye problems going hand in hand. Uh, the foot problem tends to go along with the nerve damage uh, because patients lose sensation in their feet. Uh, so beyond getting a lot of burning, they also become prone to tripping, falling, getting infections um, that can be fairly debilitating. And then we're going to, of course, focus on the eye issues because that's what I do. So several aspects of the eye which diabetic uh, diabetes affects. Um, starting with the front part of the eye, the tear film, the part that keeps your eyes nice and moist. Uh, that's a fairly complex uh, process of keeping everything in homeostasis, and uh, diabetes affects that. Makes your oil glands uh, abnormal, makes your eyelids abnormal, and all that contributes to more tired, irritated eyes, and, um, and sometimes not seeing as well. The lens of the eye, if blood sugars get very high, acts like a sponge. It soaks up uh, water very quickly and it causes your lens to swell. Uh, that can cause people to have fluctuations in their vision. Their, uh, their glasses rapidly change. The process is reversible, but it does take often several weeks to several months for that process to reverse. So it can be a very frustrating time of life. And that all contributes to cataracts. Um, both in a very fast manner, if you get a lot of swelling in the lens, 
But even over time, diabetics tend to get cataracts about 10 years uh, earlier than non-diabetics. Uh, non the retina also becomes dysfunctional because it requires a lot of blood flow um, and diabetes affects the blood flow. And glaucoma is damage to the nerve of the eye. So in this little model, we're looking towards the back where the, all the nerves are heading back to your brain. The blood that feeds and keeps that nerve healthy also gets affected and patients can lose vision as a part of the glaucoma process. So let's talk a little bit more about diabetic retinopathy. That's usually the main thing that we're concerned about uh, in diabetics. Uh, the retina is the back layer of the eye. Uh, it's analogous to the sensor or film in a camera um, that detects light, sends it back, that information back to your brain. Uh, that process requires a lot of energy and a lot of good blood flow to keep that working well. So your blood vessels on the picture of the bottom right, you can see there's kind of some layers to your to the blood vessel. As blood sugars get higher, it causes that inside layer of those blood vessels to become very irritated and to start breaking down. What happens then is the blood vessels become leaky they swell, uh, you'll get little bubbles. The blood vessels can break and burst. And so on the other two pictures of the eye, you've got what looks, what is a normal picture of your retina. There's the optic nerve that's kind of that yellowish circle on the right and the blood vessels come in and out of the middle of your optic nerve. There's kind of a little reddish spot right in the middle, kind of what those blood vessels are wrapping around. That's the center of your vision. Uh, and that's a good, normal, healthy looking eye. Uh, the picture in the middle here uh, is an eye with um, uh, diabetic retinopathy. So you can see there's a lot of little bleeds. Those are the red spots. There's a lot of yellow stuff that's reflecting. That is cholesterol, lipids, um, stuff that should be inside your blood vessels, which is ha has leaked out of the blood vessels and is now soaking into areas of your retina where it shouldn't be. Um, and that's indicated of swelling. Um, So we're concerned about diabetes or diabetic retinopathy because you can lose vision because obviously the retina is a very important structure. It can do damage in a couple ways, which ends up destroying vision. So uh, the top left there is a side cut of your retina. That dimple there is the very center of your vision. It's all nice and compact. And that's a good healthy looking retina. The picture right next to it that has all these like bubbly mountainy looking things is a retina that's quite swollen. And that's because all this fluid is going to your blood vessels, it's leaking out of the blood vessels and it's filling the retina up with fluid. This creates the retina to be very boggy um, and ends up slowly chewing away at your vision. Um, the other pictures here the, on the right, you start to get abnormal blood vessels growing because the eye's not getting enough oxygen. So it starts sending out a bunch of distress signals saying, I need more oxygen, I need more oxygen. Your body responds by making blood vessels, but their blood vessels are abnormal because your blood vessels normally develop when you're a little baby. And there's a lot of factors that cause those blood vessels to be good, healthy blood vessels. When you're an adult, those blood vessels don't have all those information it needs to grow correctly. And so it sends out these uh, new abnormal blood vessels, which then start scarring down. They can break and bleed and fill the eye with blood, or they can contract, which is what we're seeing here. So all this white, fuzzy stuff that you're seeing is contracted fibrous tissue from abnormal blood vessels, which can cause retinal detachments um, and severe vision loss. The bottom pictures are another view of um, blood flow in the eye. So in this situation, we're using a white dye to show us the blood vessels or blood flowing through the eye. So the picture on the bottom left is a nice light gray. You can see the blood vessels have a nice white this eye is getting a lot of blood flow, a lot of good oxygen. The picture next to it uh, is an eye with, with quite a lot of diabetic problems. And you can see that it's fairly black or dark gray. A lot of those areas between the blood vessels are areas that have no more blood vessels at all. The blood vessels have died off completely and there's absolutely no blood flow to them. Uh, you can see some of these areas of bright white are areas that of uh, vessels that are leaking and um, causing some problems and abnormalities. 
So basically losing blood vessels, abnormal blood vessels, and too much leaky from blood vessels all end up with vision loss. So what do you notice as a patient? Uh, in most of the early stages, you would notice nothing at all. Um, but you can get some dark spots. You can have floaters if you were to have some uh, a bleed. Um, general, just fuzzy vision, vision that's not sharp, difficulty reading, especially smaller print are the more common things. And then as it gets more progressive, there could be very large chunks of vision or a large central spot in your vision that's missing. Um, the good news is we do have uh, treatments. Um, first and foremost is good diabetic care for your whole body. That tends to really drive the disease from top to bottom. Um, but if you do uh, happen to have a lot of leaky blood vessels, there is a laser treatment that can be used to shrink up some of those uh, leaks, kind of like a spot weld uh, mentality. That was the main treatment for several decades uh, until um, medications were developed that have a better effect and are much more gentle on the eye. Um, so we used to be use steroids or what we call anti-VEGF. Those are vascular endothelial growth factor antibodies. That's one of the distress signals that your eye sends out when it's not getting enough oxygen. And so we can counteract that signal in a, a very directed manner and uh, improve the diabetic swelling and improve blood vessel status with causing very, very few uh, side effects. Uh, steroids have a bit more side effects, but also are very effective for those who need it. Um, surgery as well. So for those who end up in more severe states um, who have a lot of bleeding may need surgery to remove the blood from the eye. If there is a lot of scarring from those abnormal blood vessels, then uh, there are uh, retinal surgeons with very delicate hands who can pull apart some of that scar tissue um, and keep the eye doing pretty well. Uh, so diabetics should get routine eye exams um, or kind of uh, preventative care visits uh, for basic diabetics who don't have much going on. Uh, a yearly visit does the job. We can often see diabetic retinopathy starting a lot earlier than people have symptoms or um, where other symptoms of diabetes would show up. Uh, if there is more activity showing up, then visits may be required every six months, three months, even monthly, depending on the severity of the disease. Uh, when diabetes does start to get to kind of a moderate severe stage, it can quickly turn to a very severe stage and uh, that's why we have to watch it very closely. Uh, there can be a lot of other things that we, again, are monitoring at that time, like the cataracts, glaucoma, those other thing, um, uh, dry eye problems that are often associated with that too, that we can often help people feel more comfortable with and see better. So the core of diabetic right, I see I alluded to a little bit was um, controlling the diabetes itself. The lower your blood sugar levels, the lower your chance of diabetic retinopathy, lower risk of progression, lower risk of vision loss. Um, there is no, there are targets that often primary care doctors set uh, for A1C levels, blood sugar. From an eye care perspective, lower is always better. There are some other things we have to consider um, for people's general health that primary care doctors are very good about balancing, but the lower the sugar, the better. Uh, blood pressure also plays a very large role in diabetic retinopathy because high blood pressure stresses those blood vessels as well, and the two together can be very problematic. And so good uh, monitoring of your blood pressure, taking blood pressure medications is very helpful. Control of cholesterol levels, again, primary care doctors usually do a great job at addressing this, but it does help the overall, um, uh, helps decrease vision loss. Uh, by keeping your cholesterol levels where they should be. Uh, diet always plays a major role in diabetes. Uh, limiting re uh, sugar, refined carbohydrates, that's going to be your white starchy stuff. Um, your flour, pasta, white sugar, typically brown foods are a lot uh, better for you. That's your brown rice, uh, uh, even brown pasta, things that are using the whole uh, grain and using a lot more fiber. 
Smoking makes everything worse in your body for the most part. It particularly aggravates that inner lining of your blood vessels. So if you've got sugar that's aggravating it as well as uh, nicotine, um, again, you're adding multiple insults to the same tissue. Exercise, even very modest exercise, which is a, a decent brisk walk around the block, 10 minutes a day, goes a really long ways at uh, reducing a lot of the problems with diabetes. And losing weight is always difficult, but uh, can always be immensely helpful and completely turn diabetes around. Okay, so we are going to move into the uh, question and answer segment here. So I'm going to pull up the questions. Um, so uh, at, at this point, if anybody else has any questions, feel free to type them in the question box. Um, but I'm going to pull up what has been asked so far. Uh, can lung disease hurt the eyes as well since you talk about oxygen? Um, all diseases kind of add on top of each other. Most lung diseases, uh, you're still able to get enough oxygen to your body to function. Um, but things like sleep apnea, uh, where oxygen levels are dipping sometimes down to 60% or something, does play uh, uh, quite a big role in stressing your eyes. Um, if you need oxygen, then supplemental oxygen is helpful, but um, the correlation isn't very strong with that, unless you're getting into really severe lung disease. Okay, are there any over-the-counter supplements or drops that help? Um, for dry eyes, yes, uh, there are you know over-the-counter stuff that is helpful. Um, as far as other over-the-counter kind of supplements or anything, a general vitamin can be helpful. Uh, there's not. There's some of these more fringe uh, supplements. Um, coenzyme Q10, stuff like that, which do seem to have at least a small role of benefit in cardiovascular diseases and in diabetes. Um, there are herbal medications that help with cholesterol. There's herbal medications that help with blood pressure. So all those do have at least some uh, effect and can be used in conjunction. Um, at a certain level of disease, they're not strong enough to keep the disease back. Um, but if you're using standard medical therapy and supplementing that with um, supp uh, herbal medications, you may be able to get by with less medication. Sometimes you can get by with no medication. That's something that, um, so there's certain, a lot of possibilities there that you'd have to go over with primary care doctors to really kind of make sure that it's helping you and doing such in a, a balanced manner. Perfect. So we'll just leave the, the questions open for one more minute here and see if anybody else has any questions. I guess in the meantime, is there anything else you'd like to add, Dr. Stevenson? No. Okay. Well, so far, um, oh, we did have one more question. Hang on here. Let's pop that out. Um, actually, two more popped up. Uh, how long should you wait to see an ophthalmologist when you have a floater? Uh, a new floater, our typical goal is that you are seen uh, in 72 hours. Um, most floaters are benign in nature, but about 1% of them uh, can be associated with a retinal tear or detachment. Um, and those can progress to vision loss sometimes over a couple days, sometimes a couple weeks, but generally trying to get in within a couple of days is your best option. Okay, this is kind of a two-part question here. I get halos from oncoming headlights at night. Cataract surgery didn't help. Could halos be due to the uh, diabetic retinal issues? Most halos are going to be due to stuff in the front part of the eye, which would be dryness. Uh, so it could have some relationship to that. The cornea uh, could be playing a role. 
the lens itself and depending on at what stage there can be some haziness that develops after cataract surgery uh, called posterior capsular opacification it's a pretty common issue uh, that develops uh, where the lens capsule that holds your new lens in place can fuzz up um, get some haziness to it which can cause those halos so if that hasn't been addressed that could be a major, uh, the most likely cause um, if there is swelling in the back of the eye, you could get uh, some blurry vision, which could you could be uh, noticing and mostly as halos, but I wouldn't jump to that as the first guess. Okay. Um, and this is actually an insurance question, so this may be something that Dr. Stevenson knows or he may not know. Um, if this isn't addressed um, by Dr. Stevenson, we can have one of our, our team members reach out and, and cover this question. But what insurance covers diabetic eye exams? Um, medical insurance. Uh, so diabetes is a medical condition, and so the screening of it and care of it always goes under medical insurance. Uh, vision insurance, if this is where the question's going, essentially covers glasses, uh, contacts. They do a screening exam and often can pick up on other diseases going on, but sometimes those exams are not thorough enough to pick up on subtle uh, diabetic problems. Um, as far as uh, which type of insurance, almost every insurance company should cover a diabetic exam. Uh, insurance companies realize that uh, uh, diabetic eye problems can be very costly if not caught early. Um, they are very also debilitating to people to lose their vision. And so paying a little bit of money for exams up front saves a lot of money to health insurance companies and the health system in general by avoiding much bigger problems down the road. So uh, I have never even heard of an insurance company who's not on board with supporting diabetic exa eye exams. Perfect. Um, this is actually a follow-up question to uh, the one uh, earlier uh, about how long you should wait to see an ophthalmologist after when, when you have a floater. Um, uh, will the fuzziness ever clear on its own after cataract surgery? Um, you kind of went into what it's what it's like after cataract surgery, so I think that was posed um, in conjunction with that. So the the so is there. Uh, sorry, there was a question about the floater or the question about fuzziness, or is that? It, well, you, it's kind of, the, it's um, it's the same person asking, and I think you had mentioned when you were answering that other question that there was different types of um, things that could happen after cataract surgery as well. Um, so I, just, I think it's in conjunction with that. Okay, original. So the most common cause, which is that lens capsule opacification, can be corrected. So if that is present, has not been corrected, that's a very, it's a, a laser procedure that corrects that and it's very correctable uh, in a very low risk um, procedure. Um, if there's a floater that's causing some of this vision, uh, the floater comes about from kind of a natural separation of the jelly inside the eye. Uh, with time, that floater can kind of move out of the way, but it can be, for some people, it can be very stubborn and uh, sit right in the center of their vision and be very obstructive. Um, that floater does not go away on its own. Uh, that's kind of your friend for life. It can be surgically removed in cases where it's causing a lot of symptoms and problems, uh, but that surgery has at least enough risk that it's something that we don't advise to people unless they are really bothered by their floater. Um, so I guess to follow up, fuzziness possibly from halos, um, lens capsule after cataract surgery is what, um, the person noted. So, um, I don't. Yes. So yeah, halos after surgery, if from, uh, most likely due to haziness developing from the lens capsule. Um, I said about 75% of people need that addressed at some point after cataract surgery. Um. And that could, that's uh, an, an exam is an easy way to diagnose that and it's fairly easy to treat. Perfect. Um, I guess, are there any other questions? If not, we'll um, wrap up today. One more minute here. Um, okay, um, perfect. Well, 
thank you, Dr. Stevenson, for your time today. Uh, and if anybody has any other questions or comments, feel free to reach out to the practice. Um, and again, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful weekend and um, stay healthy. Thank you guys. Hopefully this was helpful to you and thanks Jonah for moderating it. Yeah, no problem. Let's do it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.